good evening and very warm welcome to all of you especially our uh, today's guest uh, dr du than hai minister counselor deputy chief of mission for vietnam sir very warm welcome <laughs> mr tran vian viet dong investment promotion official foreign investment agency mr du thai khan second secretary vietnam embassy <laughs> mr subhas who has joined online with us uh his excellency mr pham san chau ambassador embassy of the socialist republic of vietnam <laughs> chamber president mr ashish gujarati vice president mr haiman subodawala group chairman amit shah and committee chairman sri harshal bhagat and all of you uh we on behalf of sci i welcome you all at this very interesting program of how to explore opportunity opportunities in the vietnam so friends the chamber main responsibility is to promote trade and industry and under this uh, title this objective we carry out many uh, programs right from this kind of programs with the connection with the foreign embassies and the foreign delegation we also carry out various seminar workshop to update the skill and the knowledge about the various industries we also uh, organize many exhibitions recently we are going to organize yarn expo then sparkle then citex uh, then udyog already we had a you know very good exhibition we uh, we need that was for the viewers and it got tremendous success so this is a basically responsibility of the chamber of commerce and in this series this time we have come out Vietnam is known for the uh, you know manufacturing facilities and i think you must be seeing many products where you will be finding made in vietnam because there are two major uh, two three major centers of the manufacturing major as you know china is there and Ch after china malaysia vietnam philippines these are the another uh, upcoming center for the manufacturing facilities so today we have uh, gathered here to understand what are the opportunities to do business with the vietnam maybe in the textile maybe in the chemical pharma it any field we will be understand better from them how we can invest money there or how can get the their product from uh, to india so this is very interesting program and i am really very much happy that all of you have responded very well and hall almost uh, full so now with this uh, opening remark i request uh, as is appreciated mr ashish gujarati to give the opening address and welcome speech good afternoon everybody yeah his highness mr pam sen chau ambassador embassy of socialist republic of vietnam at new delhi dr du than hai minister councilor deputy chief mission embassy of vietnam at new delhi mr tran wet dang investment promotion official foreign investment agency <coughs> embassy of vietnam at new delhi mr du do kahan second secretary vietnam embassy mr subhas director of asia dmc my colleague office bearer himanshu bhai bodawala honorary secretary dipak bhai sethwala group chairman amit shah chairman consulate liaison harshal bhagat invited guest members of sgcci ladies and gentlemen a very warm welcome to you all for this wonderful event bilateral trade between india and vietnam has been steadily rising over past two decades with significant scope of trade in pharmaceutical oil and gas textiles chemicals diamonds gems and jewelry and of course tourism the year 2020 20 marks the 42nd anniversary of indian vietnam bilateral trade vietnam and india have shared strong bilateral trade relation historically and for the past two decades trade between the two countries has risen considerably this economic ties tie up have materialized into several indian in investments in vietnam and in various sectors the enormous volatility in the global trade environment has pushed the businesses into diversifying their supply chain away from china that is what we discuss in my office also which has increased the importance of india vietnam trade route for the international business india which is one of the fastest growing economy in the world now currently ranks fifth globally in the terms of gdp the asian indian free trade agreement aifta 
which is the Vietnam is a part of it and which was established in 2009 as a result of convergence in interest of all the parties in advancing their economic ties across the Asia Pacific. India imports 6.1 US billion dollar of goods from Vietnam annually and we export the goods worth 4.9 billion to Vietnam. Surat is MMF capital of India, manufacturing 65% of all MMF textiles. Vietnam regularly imports finished and grey fabric from India and annual volume of the export from India is around half a million dollar every year, which is significantly very low compared to China. Vietnam exports annually around US, uh, 2.5 million US worth of polyester staple fibers. Sir, we Surat are importing this, we discussed earlier. 2.4 million worth of viscose rayon spun yarn. 2.5 US billion worth of knitted fabric and around 20 million worth of garments and made up made of MMF textiles. There exists a tremendous opportunity of synergy between Surat and Vietnam as both the region can develop as a mutually beneficial trade relationship in MMF textile. Surat is globally largest center of viscose filament fabric manufacturing. We are largest in the world, sir. And Vietnam is among the best countries manufacturing viscose spun yarn. In return, Surat has among the world best textile processing facility. The facility can best be utilized by Vietnam garment manufacturer to produce the world class garment. India is among the top supplier of textile and apparel products to Vietnam. India export textile and apparel to Vietnam stood at around 351 US million dollar in 2016. It has registered the growth at the CAGR of uh, around 11% over the last five years. The textile and apparel exports constitute of, of, of about 15% of Vietnam exports turnover. TNA export of Vietnam earned 39.4 billion in 2019 while growing at the CAGR, CAGR of 10% from 27.5 3 billion in 2015. While Vietnam export has been stable growth, the import of textile and apparel commodity have also grown at a significant pace. Vietnam's textile and apparel import in 2015 were worth $15.4 billion, which has grown at the rate of 8% to reach $20.8 billion in 2019. This signifies that Vietnam mostly relies on the import of conversion of textiles and apparel domestically. This large import of textile raw material are, are attractive for textile producing countries like India. Out of total TNA import of Vietnam, nearly 46% is MMF textile. And India is second largest manufacturer of MMF textile in the world. And we Surat contribute 65% of the whole national textile production. Therefore, there exists a huge opportunity of trade between our region and Vietnam. India is currently ranked 8th in Vietnam's import of textile apparels. In order to increase the bilateral trade, we request the visiting delegates and His Highness to kindly make the visit of Surat Textile Cluster. It may take around one or two days, sir, and look for the mutual trade opportunity. Apart, Surat is also home to the world diamond processing capacity, which is 92% of the global diamond are being processed and polished in Surat. We are slowly moving towards the value addition and is likely to be the emerging, also the globally emerging manufacturing hub of jewelry, gems and jewelry. Vietnam imports nearly 5 billion US dollar worth of polished diamond from India. Surat is the ideal place for the importers of poly diamond and precious metals jewelry. We can facilitate this trade also. With this, before ending my welcome speech, I would like to highlight some of the key numbers of our region. Sir, Surat is the largest, fastest growing city in the world and it will remain up to 2035. Surat is the largest MMF textile of India. Our uh, volume is 65 percent. Surat is the largest producer of the fabric made from viscose filament yarn. We are largest producer in the world. 
सूरत इज सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर ऑफ डेनिम फैब्रिक इन इंडिया सूरत सेम एज द लीनन फैब्रिक ऑल्सो साउथ गुजरात रीजन इज ऑल्सो सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट प्रॉन एक्सपोर्टर आफ्टर आंध्र प्रदेश साउथ गुजरात रीजन हैज बिकम होम टू थर्टी थ्री परसेंट ऑफ द ऑल इंडिया केमिकल प्रोडक्शन विथ लार्ज केमिकल यूनिट्स लोकेटेड एट दहेज हजीरा अंकलेश्वर एंड वापी वी हैव इंडिया लार्जेस्ट स्टील मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्लांट एट हजीरा विथ नाइन मिलियन मेट्रिक टन ऑफ एन्युअल कैपेसिटी इट हैज टू ऑपरेशनल पोर्ट्स यूज फॉर एक्सपोर्ट्स एंड इम्पोर्ट बोथ एंड रिसेंटली वी हैव बीन जज एज द सेकेंड मोस्ट क्लीनेस सिटी ऑफ द इंडिया and this have we have been maintaining th- this since last 10 years there are many more to add but with this i would like to conclude my speech and once again i welcome all the dignitaries and all the delegates and guests thank you very much thank you mr president for your uh, warm welcome as well as showing insight about the strong relation business relation between vietnam and india after verbal welcome we would as our tradition we would like to go for our uh, uh, welcome with a bouquet and flowers first i request our uh, president mr asis gujrati to welcome his highness with a bouquet and memento i request vice president mr himan subadawala to welcome minister of council minister councilor dr du than hai i request group chairman mr amit shah to welcome mr tran wet dong investment promotion official he's coming later okay uh, 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 then mr du dai khan request amit shah group chairman i request uh, mr harshal bhagat to welcome mr du dai khan first secretary so thank you very much all dignitaries and now uh, let us straight away go to the uh, very interesting program uh, i request uh, uh, minister councilor dr du than hai to give his presentation very good afternoon the excellency ambassador from saint chou also esteemed president of sgcci ashri uh, Ashish Gujarati, esteemed Sh- Sh- Sri Himanshu Bhutdawala, <laughs> and our uh, distinguished all the participants, all the members of the SCCI, uh, all the participants, ladies and gentlemen. I think it very great pleasure for us and also for the whole team from the Vietnamese Embassy to be here today. I would like to thank the Southern Gujarat Chamber of Commerce Industry for joining us co-hosting that event. And we believe that is very important event for us that would kickstart the whole process of revitalizing and recovering from the COVID-19. And I do hope that from today we can start to work on that. And our delegation came to Gujarat uh, on s- Sunday and we immediately feel overwhelmed by the hospitality by the richness in culture for the warm of the Gujarat people Gujarati and uh, we're very happy and we are very optimistic about the futures of the relationship between our two countries Vietnam and India and also between Vietnam and Gujarat and we have learned a lot actually just you came here to see see is believing and we came here to meet people and we we'll see and what we realize as gujarat has a lot of potentiality to become so the 
biggest hub, economic hub in India, especially in the field of textile and garment, uh, chemicals, machineries, and also a very potential destination for tourists as well. And um, I think that that's also we are impressed by Gujarat is a second cleanest cities in India. And we would like to congratulate you all of that. And you know that it's not very, not very easy always to balance between the two goals, economic development on the one side and also environmental protection on the other side. And we are also very impressed that those Gujarat is a, a hub for the textile and garment industry. That is quite a polluting industry, but you also uh, managed to use on the wastewater from the household for the industry and don't touch upon the groundwater, which is you know one of the legacy of us for our next generations. I think that also congratulations on that. And definitely we will learn from that. And so we hope that you also share that experience. And also third point I want to mention is about you know the potential cooperation between Vietnam and also Gujarat. And I think that we have a lot of things in mind. And first of all, I think that uh, as the Excellency uh, President of SGCC, I also mentioned, I mean, the time is very important. The thing is that the current uncertainty environment would all happen, make sure that, you know, the ship, the restructuring of the supply chain put Vietnam and India at the forefront. And I think the war needed for a resilient and also reliable supply of all the things that we have. So I think that we see a lot of at greater attention, much greater attention before on India. And we hope that India will soon come become a world manufacturing factory that also provide alternatives to all the important goods and also uh, the things that the global market needed. And also we see that uh, we, our country have political trust. It is very important because without trust, we could not do business with each other. And we do believe that in the, the past, we put much trust and also to rely on one or two supplier and that it doesn't work in the, uh, in the world today. Because we think that you know, economy and security are linked to each other. And one thing that we're looking for the trusted partner rather than is the unexpensive source of supply. Of course, Economic supplies is important, but it comes up with the expense of security, is it not good? So I think that the third one, I think that we also realize that there's a lot of potentialities on the field of uh, textile, garment, pharmaceuticals, machinery, chemicals, agro, cultural business, also spices, and also tourism as well. That are also the reason why we came here. Ambassador had a high level of the embassy came down, and of course we also have the many important guests from the Vietnamese side. And we do hope that with the, all the participants here, we will have a successful business forum connecting Vietnam and India and Gujarat to be specific. And from the standpoint of the embassy, we'll do our best to support the business community. And we hope with that, you know, we have very fruitful exchange and um, I mean the start of the business connection from today. Thanks a lot. Recording in progress. Thank you, Mr. Duthan, Lai, for uh, your wonderful presentation. Now, I request uh, Mr. Tran Viet Dong, Investment Promotion Official, Foreign Investment Agency. You can start the presentation. Okay, thank you. Right. Um, His Excellency Mr. Park Chang Chow, uh, the Ambassador of Vietnam to India, Davis uh, Kuchanati, the President of SGCCI, and ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to start my presentation on Vietnam investment uh, policies and strategies in uh, Lyon. So uh, the presentation will be um, laid out in the structure as uh, here you can see here. 
Uh, let's start with uh, the overview of the land economy. We have uh, been one of uh, the fastest growing uh, economy in the world. And uh, 2020 has been um, quite a hard year due to COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, global tensions among major partners, uh, regional trade and uh, political conflicts, uh, climate change and a lot of, um, you know, other reasons. Uh, that's why uh, the GDP grew only by 1.42% uh, for the first uh, nine months of 2021 and uh, 291 for uh, 2020. Uh, however, uh, for the last few quarters of 2021, uh, our total trade volume reached uh, over to uh, 483 billion dollars, which was an increase of uh, nearly 25 percent comparing to the same period of 2020. Um, in general, the FDI flows in Vietnam uh, was uh, has had been growing for the last few decades, and you can see here in the graph. Uh, up until 2021 uh, October, there have been uh, 141 economies investing in Vietnam with over 34,000 projects. And uh, the cumulative register of capital reached um, over 400 billion US dollars. Um, however, the top investors come from you know, South Korea, Japan, Singapore, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. Uh, Indian investors, uh, unfortunately, falls only at a 26th place. Uh, you can see that most investors, investors coming to uh, Vietnam concentrates on manufacturing and processing, uh, real estate, electricity production, and uh, distribution. Um, a lot of these investment projects focuses on big cities and provinces like Ho Chi Minh City, Bình Dương, Hanoi, and Phare uh, Nhat Town. So, um, in 20, uh, for the first 10 months of 2021, um, our uh, newly registered capital, adjusted capital, and shares uh, purchase uh, reached 34.7 billion dollars, uh, which was only a mild decrease compared to the same period in 2020 of 1.1%. Uh, However, we can see that uh, we still have a lot of uh, you know good um, incentives, so a bright uh, outlook in the near future. Um, now, as for in the FDI in Vietnam, I have to remind you that this is only um, direct investment. This has not accounted for investment from India through third um, countries like uh, you know, Singapore uh, and other Asian countries. Um, as I mentioned earlier, India right now ranks only at the 26th place out of 140 countries and territories invested in Vietnam. Invest, uh, Indian investors, um, you know, focuses mainly on manufacturing and processing, and also electricity and production and distribution. And um, that's why uh, you can see on the right side of the slide, um, these um, investment projects focuses mainly in the like the middle um, areas of Vietnam, like Ninh Thuận, Phú Yên, and, and uh, in the provinces. Uh, I have to say that um, a few of the biggest uh, investment projects in Vietnam includes a uh, sugar factory in uh, Phu Yen, a uh, solar energy project in uh, Ninh Thuận, and another coffee manufacturing and processing in uh, Bình Dương by Tata. So now let's move on to our um, strategy and preparation for uh, promoting and uh, for attracting new FDI in the new normal uh, during and post COVID-19 pandemic. You can see that we are preparing our industrial estate, like uh, the economic uh, such places. We also focus a lot on training, uh, preparing energy for uh, investment projects. We support, promote, uh, promote supporting industry and we're also trying to develop and creating a more uh, favorable and incentivized uh, institutional framework. Um, I'll explain on this later. Uh, and also I have to say that, that uh, in 2020 we have a special, uh, the government of Vietnam created a special task force to support all investment projects, including domestic and foreign 
uh, in vacuum project in life. And uh, one more note here is that uh, Vinay is uh, you know, trying and focusing more on proactively and selectively attract uh, foreign investment based on quality, efficiency, uh, technological uh, advancement, and uh, environmental friendliness. Uh, of course, these uh, new investment projects have to have a high spillover e effect, uh, provide uh, new high green technology with a modern ad ad administration system, and help uh, these uh, companies to join the, uh, their global supply chain and production chains. <clears throat> this is just uh, an example of, of um, you know the preparation for. Uh, you know, tracking API uh, inflows to Vietnam. Now let's come to uh, the creation of a more favorable legal framework. As a lot of you have, uh, might not have known, uh, in 2020, Vietnam uh, <coughs> established three new laws on investment, on enterprises, and on investment in forms of uh, public-private uh, partnership. And here's the. Uh, you know, according to these new laws, these will be a better incentives. Um, you know, um, only tax here uh, for foreign investors to, to come and invest into Vietnam. Uh, you can see that uh, we have uh, our special invest, yeah, incentives according to the new law with uh, you know tax rate of fifth five percent for a maximum of thirty seven years. And of course, the requirements are also laid out here. Um, Investment uh, projects um, that are qualified for uh, you know these special incentives include investment projects that have huge impacts in economic and social development uh, with the investment of over 30,000 million US uh, in the which is around uh, over 1 million USD. Um, innovation centers, uh, research and development centers are also. Incentivized and uh, you know other additional requirements uh, relating to technologies, technology transfer, uh, the percentage of Vietnamese business participating in the supply chain, and added value. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, so um, as I mentioned earlier, we also have a special tax spots on support excellent projects in Vietnam both domestic investors and foreign investors alike. Uh, you can see here that um, you know, we focus a lot on transport infrastructure, seaports, airports, and connecting developments. <coughs> uh, we are also uh, proactive with flexible uh, and civil measures to reach and negotiate with large high-tech corporations and uh, you know, leading or operate value chains uh, in, in the global economy. Uh, as in the context of COVID-19 pandemic, Vietnam has um, done a lot of uh, works, uh, issues a lot of uh, resolutions uh, and you know, um, just the legal framework to support businesses uh, to overcome difficulties for the last two years. Um, you know, you can look at Resolution you know, 68, uh, Resolution 105, and Resolution uh, 116, um, which were issued to uh, help both your businesses, cooperatives, business households, and citizens to overcome the difficulties of the pandemic. Uh, here are uh, other measures to support FBI uh, businesses during the pandemic. <coughs> Uh, you know, I can provide this uh, presentation later uh, if uh, you want, and you can contact the embassy or you know, SGCCI for uh, more information. So, we have support from the Ministry of Planning and Investment and also for an investment agency. We are ready to uh, accompany and support for an uh, investors to invest in Vietnam, we provide you information uh, on laws and policies, we we'll connect you with uh, other state agencies at uh, different, uh, different levels and provinces to help you with uh, any difficulties or problems you might have here in Vietnam. We also can help with organizing uh, business events, business matchings, and uh, so on like uh, today. 
and uh, we are ready to support uh, you whenever you come to Vietnam. And um, that's a very short uh, presentation of uh, me today. Thank you for listening, and uh, I'm very supposed to be Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, that is a very interesting uh, information you have shared and also you have informed that you have come out with a very uh, friendly laws of post-COVID. So I think uh, we should, uh, we would also like to request uh, you should come out with some business meetings so that uh, can definitely encourage. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was saying. That, thank you very much for a wonderful presentation and you have also shown there is a lot of opportunity for the India as a among the Asian countries it is uh, or, uh, having the less concentration of the investment in the uh, Vietnam and you have also come out uh, with a very int uh, friendly uh, industry friendly policy post COVID. So what I would like to suggest uh, you should come out with some business delegations so that we can have one to one meeting and uh, 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 businessmen from your side and our, our side can meet and can uh, plan the future uh, programs. So with this uh, again thanking you. And now we go ahead uh, with the program. Now I request uh, Mr. Du Thai Dai Khan, Second Secretary Vietnam Embassy, for his presentation on trade opportunities. Dear His Excellency Mr. Phạm Sang Chau, Ambassador of Vietnam to India, uh, Sri Aris Gujarati, President of the Southern Gujarat Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Dear Mr. Chen Viet Dung, Deputy Director, Foreign Investment Agency, Ministry of Investment and Planning. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in an unprecedented situation in our history when the whole world is heavily hit by the COVID-19 pandemic that left live life of millions of people, including Indians and Vietnamese. Now the situation in India is much better and most economic activities are back to normalcy. Why? In Vietnam, the pandemic is still serious with the number of daily cases about 10,000. Although the pandemic has not yet ended, we still have to create the most favorable condition for trade in investment so as not to disrupt the economy, create the resources to fight the pandemic and uh, improve the citizen incomes as well as uh, create uh, new opportunities for economic development. I think this is the role of the most country in the world, including Vietnam and India. Now, I would like to present about the trade relation between the India and Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam is located in Southeast Asia, the gateway of international trade with many seaports in the South China Sea in the name of Vietnam is a EC, one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. Vietnam population is nearly 1,000 million, GDP is about 300 million uh, US dollars. It means GDP per capita is about $3,000. And the total import and export turnover in 2020 double GDP about six. 100 billion dollars. And Vietnam has signed 16 free trade agreements with more than 50 countries around the world, and including new generation trade agreements such as the CPTPP, EVFTA. Vietnam and India has a long standing traditional relationship that have been nurtured by leader generations. The two countries established a diplom diplomatic relationship in 1971 a strategic partnership in 2007 and a comprehensive strategic partnership in 2016. Um, and the trade is uh, one of the five pillars of the comprehensive strategic between the two countries. Uh, and India is one of the top 10 trading partners of uh, Vietnam and Vietnam is the top 17 tra largest trading partners of India. And uh, in the first uh, 10 uh, months of 2021, the total bilateral trade turnover reached nearly $11 billion, an increase of 37.68% over the same period of the last year. Uh, with the growth momentum, it is hoped that the two countries can uh, soon reach the target of bilateral trade turnover of $15 billion US dollars 
that's set by the two military uh, uh, prime ministers. Uh, uh, we can see that the two countries are supporting each other. Uh, for example, India imports uh, raw material from Vietnam with steel, agriculture, and then export final or intermediate product to Vietnam and other countries. By the way, Vietnam imports fishery from India and process and uh, export to India and other countries. So uh, we are a lot of uh, opportunities and potential to uh, do business and trading. The main products that Vietnam export to India are mobile phones, uh, computers, electronic products, machinery, equipment, iron, steel, chemicals, natural rubber, and agricultural products uh, such as pepper, coffee, uh, cashew, and tea. And the main products that India export from Vietnam are iron, steel, machinery, equipment, cotton, seafood, pharmaceutical special stones, uh, special metals and products, uh, including um, diamond. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the linkage between the two sides were marked in 2019, when the direct flight route was established between the New Delhi and Hanoi and New Delhi Ho Chi Minh City, Kolkata Hanoi and Kolkata Ho Chi Minh City, with a travel time of just only three to four hours opening up a lot of opportunities for tourism, investment, and trade. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, these potentials are currently complex, but will be ready to explode whenever the pandemic is well under control. India is the sixth largest economy in the world and will become the fifth largest uh, economy and may become the third largest economy by the 2028, according to some research. Uh, Vietnam is a dynamic and open economy, participating in many bilateral and multilateral free trade agreements. The two sides have many opportunities to strengthen trade and investment relations to regularize the uh, potentials. Uh, trade, cooperation, investment in agriculture, fishery, uh, textiles, pharmaceutical, and information technology are, are and will be the main driving forces in the economic relation. In addition, India is a country with a lot of experience and achievements in the fields of primary chain response, uh, information technology, and healthcare that Vietnam can learn from. Digital transformation will be the future cooperation in the both government and business sectors. Uh, the Vietnam Embassy, and the, uh, um, including the Trade Office, has always supported businesses, especially small and medium-sized enterprises from the both sides. Especially in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, supporting businesses becomes even more important. For Indian businesses, if you have a need to find out information or find out about the investment and business opportunities in Vietnam, or any needs in the cooperation with Vietnam. The Vietnamese embassy is uh, the rest you should think about. Uh, that's come to the end of my presentation. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Uh, His Excellency, the President, and all businesses for patiently listening. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Khan, for giving insight about uh, what are the transaction India and Vietnam are having. Now, I request Mr. Subhas, Director of SIDMC, for the presentation on Vietnam tourism. Thank you, Rashad Ji. And uh, Namaste and Xin Chao to His Excellency Ambassador, uh, Mr. Phan Xin Chao, uh, Dr. Dothan Hai, uh, Minister Councillor, Deputy Chief of Mission, uh, and uh, President uh, of SGCCI, uh, Sri Ashish Ji and uh, Vice President Himanshu Ji and Mr. Zoom from uh, um, Foreign Investment Agency and uh, uh, Mr. Khain from Second Secretary of Vietnam Embassy and uh, uh, good brother Mr. Ruk Nguyen uh, who is working very hard on this event and uh, Mr. Thuong from the uh, Trade Office in Vietnam, India. I would like to thank you all for your opportunity. So apart from the business 
you also need to have some leisure time in uh, Vietnam. And Vietnam is one of the most beautiful country you will see after uh, India. So I would like to share some information about tourism uh, into uh, Vietnam. So as uh, you know, the capital is Hanoi and uh, her, um, the, almost the borders are closed and the country is opening up uh, slowly. So currently, Da Nang and Phu um, um, which is an island, uh, both, both open for tourism. The first tourists have already entered from Korea to both these places. And from India, we are operate, we are the GSA for Indigo Airlines. So currently, uh, we are operating a monthly flight along with the support of uh, His Excellency Ambassador and uh, Vietnam Embassy in India uh, and support from the Indian Embassy in uh, Vietnam. We are operating every month, we have one flight uh, operated by Indigo from New Delhi to Hanoi. And this month, we are operating a flight on 26. We are planning to operate uh, regular flights from Kolkata to Hanoi and uh, Bangalore to Hanoi and Delhi to Hanoi uh, once the borders are open. So we may have a daily regular flight from India uh, to Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City, which are the major airports uh, in Vietnam. And of course, the visa currently, the visa, uh, we are having some um, difficulties because uh, what the business people will need to have uh, approvals from the sponsors, which will take you uh, 15 days to one, uh, one month. Uh, but during the normal time, when the situation gets better, uh, you can apply the visa to the Vietnam Embassy in India or the Consulate of, uh, Vietnam, Embassy, uh, the Consulate of Vietnam in Mumbai, or you also can apply through online e-visa. So Indians have a single entry uh, visa for $25 um, or multiple entry for $50. So it takes about three to four days uh, for the online visa. And uh, for people who are, uh, especially Gujarat is a place where a lot of uh, destination wedding happens uh, uh, abroad. So uh, we would like to suggest some of the places for destination wedding and for leisure tourists with your family. So if you are a natural lover and you want to know more about the history, North Vietnam in this English, Hanoi, Along Bay, Sapa, Ninh would be the best option. If you are a beach lover, then Hue, Da Nang, Boyan, Shan would be the best option. And if you are more into modern shopping, nightlife, then Ho Chi Minh City, uh, Mekong, Delta, Phu Islands uh, would be a best option. I will go very quickly to the places. So Hanoi is the capital city. So um, uh, the major airports uh, and the uh, government offices are based in Hanoi. So if you want to visit Hanoi, you can visit Hanoi along with uh, Halong Bay, which is one of the seven natural wonders, and also UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, it's also a very good destination for destination wedding. And Ningming is also another UNESCO World Heritage Site uh, with, with one of the um, Southeast Asia's uh, largest pagoda, uh, which is which is also a good destination for wedding for Indian weddings. So central Vietnam is more of beach, and the biggest Indian wedding, uh, one of the Indian wedding happened in uh, central Vietnam in a province called uh, Da Nang. So Da Nang has one of the most beautiful beach in uh, Vietnam, it is also known as the Singapore of uh, Vietnam. So uh, it's also a beautiful property, a beautiful destination for weddings, along with a destination for holiday. Hoyan is one of the ancient towns in Vietnam, a good place for shopping, especially uh, ladies uh, who love to do, uh, do, to do uh, purchase uh, silk and the uh, lantern lights, uh, they can visit uh, Hoyan. And Ho Chi Minh City is the business capital of um, uh, Vietnam. So, uh, especially for nightlife um, and for other entertainments, uh, Ho Chi Minh City would be a good option. Um, apart from that, you also can visit Mekong Delta and Kuchi Tunnels. 
there will be other places for waiting which would be Nachang, uh, Fukuok and uh, even Dalat also a good place for waiting. And about our company, we are uh, uh, established in 1997, the next year would be almost 25 years and we have uh, 14 officers uh, throughout in the, uh, Vietnam uh, and also in Europe. So we used to serve 50,000 customers. Currently the border is closed and we are one of the top 10 uh, tour operators uh, in uh, Vietnam. We have been awarded by the Vietnam Tourism Administration Board for the past 10 years. And we are also a World Travel Award winner for the past two years. And we have the largest fleet in Halong Bay and we are the GSA for Indigo Airlines from India. And uh, the detailed presentation, I will send it to the Vietnam Embassy. So if you need uh, more information, you could uh, contact Vietnam Embassy or you can take down my WhatsApp number and my email. I'd be very happy to assist you in case if you are planning to come for a holiday or organize a wedding uh, through the support of uh, Vietnam Embassy. Thank you. This was the most interesting because it was a travel <laughs> presentation and we could, uh, we know that uh, Vietnam is uh, uh, really very much blessed with uh, exotic beauty, natural beauty. So it is lovable country. Uh, About our, uh, travel expo. Yeah, so I would like to request uh, Mrs. Subhas that uh, we are going to plan mm -hmm. our uh, travel expo in I think next January, when is why? No. February. February. So it would be very interesting if you would, uh, take some details from Mr. Venus, who is the chairman of the Travel Expo, and uh, yeah, yeah, handed over. Handed over. yeah. So it has been handed over. So please see that uh, Vietnam stall comes over there. Mm, so it will definitely Surat uh, Surti people basically they are uh, the quite uh, interesting in roaming around the, uh, in the country and uh, around the country. So please see that you participate in this uh, Travel Expo. Now uh, I think. Finally, uh, first we take a question, sir. Ha, koi ne koi question, so ito apne apne chalu kariye session. Please, I request all the dignitaries to come on the dais. Now, since the presentation round is over, we ne apni koi ne koi manga hoye, ya thoda to yaha thi kya mukkal hoye, thoda to invest karu hoye, ya ne kya ek samajhu hoye. To chokkasaj, tamara prastha puchhi sakho chhu. Hello. Earlier, apne apne chala discussion thayu ye bokore. रबरिकलोडक्ट <laughs> प्रोसेस for import or export <coughs> i think i would like to uh, no, no, uh, twist the question in a way uh, he is a uh, very good manufacturer over here and he wants to export his material how we can connect the user or the importer over there i think as a as a pharmaceutical products of course we have um, they, they need the import license to get in but it's get from the vietnamese company so you need to work with the vietnamese company to exchange with them also the products and the quantity and also the Vietnamese company they have to work with the I think the drug authority, uh, authority in Vietnam to get the permission to import. Yeah. Thank you. Next. <coughs> Any other question? I'd like to ask, uh, presently the shipment time from India to Ho Chi Minh port is around around 22 days. So due to this reason, uh, there are many times we are having comparison with Chinese because the Shanghai port is quite near to Ho Chi Minh and you know, uh, uh, I think Hanoi. So is there any way we can reduce the shipment time and 
we have we need to have a direct shipment because we are not having a direct we are going through singapore i think yeah thank you i think it's for a question is it mean that you want to reduce the uh, uh, shipping time yes yeah. i think we are not uh, uh, getting the orders which we deserve, yeah. you know because the prices the product everything is working well but the shipment time is not working enough yes because uh, now the shipment from vietnam to india yeah. is uh, always uh, have a transit in singapore yeah. and uh, in vietnam india try to uh, do uh, to, to have the direct uh, shipment from uh, vietnam to india to reduce the yeah. yeah. time but uh, this uh, project is under research and uh, construct but uh, not finished Uh, hopefully, because uh, it depends on lots of uh, things. But uh, it un under. I think you know, if you can work this out, it will be really beneficial for the Indian exporters and uh, importers. Because yes. a lot of times the prices, you know, uh, com compared to the Chinese, the product is also good. But when it comes to the shipment time, everything is you know stalled. Because uh, you have a big garment industry in, in Vietnam, and uh, everyone wants the fabric yarn really fast. They compare us with the Chinese. They say you get it in 10 days from, or 15 days from the Chinese, and from India it takes around 22 days the shipment. Yes. And for us, need time we need at least 15-20 days more. So if we can work on this, I think uh, it's it's a point where. Yeah, it's a very good point. Yeah. We as a chamber also will yeah. take up this matter with yeah. Commerce Ministry, Foreign Ministry, and uh, Shipping Ministry also. Thank you. Is it, is it possible that uh, you give some extra incentives to the? Uh, Uh, your people importers who import from india has come to the china so that will also compensate this uh, no issue is it so i think uh, there are few products which uh, we are better than chinese but only problem is the lead time yeah okay right and i think even they face the same problem with us yeah. if they want to export to india the lead time is so big even some importers in india will will want to you know compare with other other, other countries nearby We both together, direct uh, connection. We are we both together, sir. We'll uh, take up this issue. Yeah. Respective government. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, please. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Vietnam, I have very good manufacturing facilities. So, is there any platform where uh, we can connect with the importers from Vietnam? Like, for example, China, China, Alibaba. So it's very easy to source uh, fabrics or materials uh, from China. So, uh, do you have any platform where uh, sourcing site? Yeah, B2B site. I see that we have uh, we have many e-commerce platform operating in Vietnam. The moment, the Shopee, Lazada, and uh, and yeah, Sendong. I see a couple. We have a couple already, like in the Flipkart and also Nikia uh, here in, in India. So I think that it better because you know maybe it's not well known to the Indian people, Indian business. So I think that we can set up a a forum so that we can circulate some kind of basic question as such. So so establish the connection with that online platform as well. Would be great if you share some of the platforms with the chamber. We definitely yes, yes, we we'll do that. Mr. Kind, okay. We'll so, uh, collect all the information about the uh, uh, online platform, e-commerce <coughs> platform, also share with all the Indian business. Thanks a lot. Chamber, my friend, it is very useful for me, boss. Eh, today online commerce or e-commerce site, eh, so that we can get the details. Remember, after this, we have to do a Zoom webinar, boss. हिंदी कोई पूछो अपने चौक्स कोई गुजराती सवाल हो तो ट्रांसलेट हाँ बोलो ना ते एम्ब्रॉइडरी ने रिलेटेड वेरी मेनियर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जो एक्सपोर्ट करव हो तो त्या कोई एवं है कि बॉन्ड लाइसेंस हो तो ये इम्पोर्ट करिए कि अँ थी आप एक्सपोर्ट करिए तो त्या इम्पोर्टर पास बॉन्ड लाइसेंस हो जरूर बॉन्ड लाइसेंस के कोईपण ने अपने एक्सपोर्ट कर 
He is into textile. No, I, I, he is manufacturing uh, yarn for embroidery, especially. He wants to export that yarn to Vietnam. So the importer from Vietnam, does he need any bonded license or any other thing? Or is it a free the thing? About the, the question is uh, about the young product, uh, we, as far as I know, I can check more, but uh, in FIS, I know we are, have no license for this product, so I can uh, find the uh, exporter and uh, uh, sign the contract and uh, make the shipment. Okay, we have Vietnam and India FT agreement both sides. Sir, we, we, I got updated just now. So course, uh, there is no import duty also. If import and export duty both. So we, we are having a FTA, bilateral FTA agreement. So I have no restriction. Buy sir. Sir, buy company. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you have to have a certificate. A product list, a product list, you can research it. But at least textile, you have to have a FTA. Yeah, fabric. Yeah, fabric. Yeah. Because Vietnam... And one more important thing. Yeah, of course, you have to certificate the quality from the government. Yeah, we have a chamber issue that certificate. Yeah, that certificate will be original. As per you say that FTA is... Can you put up your mask? Yes, sorry. Uh, as you said that FTA is, uh, uh, is between Vietnam and uh, you know India, uh, does it also apply for, uh, because Vietnam is manufacturing black pepper, which has been a largest commodity of, you know, uh, highest commodity which is Vietnam is exporting to the world, as well as if we talk about, uh, uh, no, uh, cinnamon, which has been again the second largest commodity. So, uh, we also would like to understand where uh, the FTA has been uh, available for India and uh, you know, Vietnam for this commodity. In this case, you can contact the chamber, you can contact the FTA in this case. In the textile, we are sure that there is a lot of yarn here that is import-free. And we also export it, but we don't have duty. Because it was happening, it was going, it was routing, routing to Sri Lanka and via Sri Lanka it was moving towards India. So, it will be... तमारो नहीं था कांटेक्ट नंबर आप ही जो जो आपने आखिर जो प्रोडक्ट लिस्ट जैसे नहीं आती है नहीं ये तुमने पहुंचा दी देश पावर नहीं तो तुम्हें कांटेक्ट करो चैम्बर में तो हम इसमें पॉलिक देश आएंगे मर जो तो तरह तरह तुमने लिस्ट आप ही देते हैं तमारे थैंक यू अपने मेंबर्स वाले चैम्बर में we are planning one expo in Vietnam. We are showcasing the product in Surat. We are showcasing the product in Surat. We are planning the textile in Surat. We are planning the bilateral trade. We are planning the Zoom meeting. We are planning the information from the Zoom meeting. We are planning the contact with the blood member. We are planning the email ID and WhatsApp number. So, we can register and get the information about what we are doing in Zoom meetings. Well, sir, I have been visited in Vietnam before Covid and it was a small trip planning to do the R&D. So, there I learned this thing that it is exporting most of this community as well. And in the meantime, I would also like to say Subhash Ji because he helped me to move out from Vietnam and because I am not able to get the flight. So, he was really helpful for us. And I'm really thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, we are also thankful. <laughs> yeah. So hello, uh, I belong to IT industry, and I would like to explore, you know, uh, like opportunities for uh, you know the outsourcing or a product, uh, you know, scope either in Vietnam or, uh, you know, for import and export both the sites. Uh, uh, IT, IT. 
the IT, uh, you're talking about the IT corporation, you, you, you want to meet with Vietnam. And uh, IT is uh, one area we, uh, is a top priority we want to with, uh, attract the FDI from the other country, including India. So, so I venture with uh, uh, companies in Vietnam like uh, uh, MPT and other companies. And like uh, now, I think I remember SA, uh, ETL, ETL company is uh, um, information technology in uh, India have uh, established uh, uh, office uh, in Vietnam. And uh, I think uh, this is the, the potential areas you can uh, think and uh, invest. Thank you. IT is a big opportunity. If you have IT, no preference for the people. IT, what, what do you uh, mean by IT? There is a wide uh, scale. Uh, information technology might have uh, outsourcing software. Yeah, inviting. Uh, we have here, right person, IT. Hello, are no questions there? But to Paku, thank you. Wait a little. So now let us go to very important now agenda. Now we have His Highness Mr. Farm San Chao, Ambassador, Embassy of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. So please uh, give your please give your concluding remarks about the program. A very good afternoon to all of you, Mr. Chairman of the uh, uh, South. Uh, Gujarat Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Ashish uh, Gujarati. I like your name very much because it's very easy to pronounce. <laughs> it's the first, uh, the easiest uh, name I have uh, come across in uh, in India. Mr. Vice President of the Chamber, uh, Mr. Honorary uh, Secretary, Member of the Committee, uh, Mr. Uh, Zung, the Deputy Director of the uh, Investment uh, Agency of the Ministry of Planning Investment, Mr. Subash. Uh, dear Carl, uh, Mr. Uh, Director of uh, 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 Lip and Bound uh, Investment uh, Consultancy in Vietnam, my dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to begin by expressing our sincere thanks and appreciation to the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the President, his team, and the entire member of the Chamber who are present here today for the very cordial and warm exception, a reception extended to us. We are very grateful for your presence. Uh, this is my uh, first time, and also it's our first time, uh, to be in uh, Surat. We heard about this city uh, since I was in Belgium. I was ambassador there. I normally uh, visited Antwerp. Uh, the major port, which uh, is known, which earned the name from uh, Diamond Trading Center. So I heard a little bit about this city, uh, Surat, but it was uh, only until today I could come and pay you a visit. It's a little bit overdue, over three years, but still I'm very happy that I can make it. And um, I'm very pleased about the success of the deliberation uh, today. I think that my uh, deputy head of mission has uh, shared with you in a broader way the strong cordial relationship that Vietnam and India have entertained over the past many years. And when you talk about Vietnam, you feel something very strong within you. It is the same especially for many people in West Bengal, in Kerala, during the Vietnam War. And we feel very strongly about the, f the people of India. For us, India is one of the best friends that we can have in the world, and one of the trustiest friends 
who have been always beside the Vietnamese people uh, through uh, the course of its history for national building and national uh, struggle for independence. So uh, we are here just for a um, one-day visit. We are about to leave to the uh, airport, going back to New Delhi. Uh, we are very pleased that we can discuss a number of things. So as our um, observation, I think that this meeting has brought up the four main uh, achievements. The first achievement is that uh, we understand better about uh, Surat. We understand of, of Gujarat, yes, because I went to uh, the vibrant Gujarat, I visited the uh, uh, statue of uh, unity, uh, I visited the uh, various well, step well. I like most of the step well that is appear on the 100 rupee note. I love the step well, uh, which is located, uh, which is the Ada, Ad, Ad, Adalats near Ahmedabad. I just take pictures there. I love the um, uh, the place of Mohammad Gandhi. Uh, each time coming back from Gujarat, we took with us either the will or the uh, small statute of liberty. So basically, we understand Gujarat, but Surat is the first time. So we know more about the people here. We know more that it is the first uh, one of the hub. It is the hub of Gujarat state. I know about the center, which are uh, diamond center, which are going to see. We learn about also the the strength that you have, especially in textile, in chemical, uh, also in pharma. So first thing we can learn is that we get a better understanding of each other. And I believe that this is uh, one of the Vietnamese delegation that come to see you after many, many years. I hope that more and more Vietnamese delegation will come to see you and discuss with you. So this is the first achievement. I think that we have broken the ice yeah. and we have come to each other. That is the biggest achievement. The second uh, achievement, I believe that you learn more about Vietnam through the presentation of our friend Subash. Uh, for DMC, you see how beautiful it is. I see the beauty of uh, Gujarat already. If you doubt, you check my tweet and you see how I like it. But you can go to Vietnam, and we are working with a number of company in order to uh, to make more uh, visitors of Gujarat coming to Vietnam. And, vi and vice versa. I saw this is very important. So in terms of investment, and I hope that we will be able to participate in the exhibition on tourism organized by the Chamber of Commerce in February. Uh, it is very important. I think that uh, Gujarati people uh, 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 instinctively, instinctively, they really love to travel, and they travel extensively, and they are connoisseurs. They know how to uh, appreciate and enjoy the beauty. Uh, in terms of gastronomy as well as in terms of the scenery. So tourism, I believe that will uh, take off uh, between uh, uh, Gujarat and Vietnam. That is the second achievement. The third achievement, I believe, in terms of uh, trade. So we have been uh, uh, notified of your problem. Uh, we also are aware of your desire to get connected with your partners in Vietnam. So please contact Mr. Khang, our Deputy Chief of Trade uh, Session at the Embassy. Uh, so you will get the, uh, the contact point for the items that you want to export, either is uh, yarn or fabric, or perhaps for the item that you want to import. Especially also in terms of uh, pepper, you mentioned about pepper. Before I came here, I was entrusted by my Prime Minister try to uh, get away the cap that the government of India has put on the black pepper imported from Vietnam to India. I am still struggling. <laughs> it is still there at the moment. Uh, that's why uh, you, uh, you, you have uh, to buy it a little bit more expensive because of the tax that we have to pay. Uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's a special item. Uh, the government of India uh, uh, told us that it is a sensitive item. That's why the reason they have to put a, a little bit of cap on that. 
But apart from that, uh, we just uh, uh, have to sign a big uh, uh, contract whereby uh, 5,000 uh, tons of pepper will be exported to a pharmaceutical company, a herbal company in, in India to process, to extract and process for the uh, oil. This is so, and so important. And also the same amount of, uh, of ginger uh, will be exported to, Viet uh, to India. From Vietnam. So basically, uh, India, uh, India is also a market, an important market for spices in Vietnam, and we grow a lot of spices. We also come to learn more about the very challenging uh, problem faced by all the company in terms of shipment, uh, shipment time. I want to share with you that uh, we experienced that problem ourselves. The embassy. At the moment, the new embassy building is under construction. We order some uh, frames, uh, door, and windows from Vietnam. We want to promote a little bit uh, the companies, the Vietnamese made products, and it took us much more than we expected. More than not only 22 days, but only already two months. It have not reached. It have not reached the site yet, and we, I just touch wood and keep praying, praying so that the. The item can reach on site, so my leader, who is ex scheduled to come and can open it. How can you imagine without the, the building, with everything is ready without the door and windows? So we understand that situation very much. But I'm very pleased to uh, tell you that uh, we are in discussion with a number of major companies, including Adani, uh, to uh, development uh, to develop port. So I hope that with that port, we will be able to get a, connect, a, a direct link between Vietnamese port and Indian ports uh, without having to go via Singapore, which is very costly and time consuming. Uh, recently, um, both of us uh, helped each other uh, very strongly during the pandemic. Vietnam also export uh, oxygen concentrator to Indian people. And also at the second wave, Indian government also have to uh, have Vietnamese people by exporting oxygen uh, generator and cleaner. And we cannot do that through the commercial or ordinary uh, ships. We have to use the Navy ship from the Navy of, of India. Having said that, I realize this is an important issue. I hope that the, the chamber together with the embassy, and I will bring it up for at the government level, G2G, in order to address that, but uh, this uh, we need also to involve the private entrepreneurs in order to develop port and uh, build the routes, uh, the marine routes between our two countries. I take uh, credit for being able to establish the direct flight between Hanoi and New Delhi and Hanoi uh, and 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 uh, and Kolkata and Ho Chi Minh City, New Delhi and Ho Chi Minh City and Kolkata. I via Indigo, as uh, presented uh, by Mr. Subash, or uh, by Vietjet. So uh, that is a game changer. It's uh, historic in the sense that it makes our two people closer, cl much closer. Because now we travel only within less than four hours. When I came in, I took my post here. It took me the whole day. I have to stop over in, in Thailand. And the uh, layover is more than eight hours, so it's very, very um, tiring. Now you take the flight. I mean, if you if you have good connection with uh, between uh, Surat and Indigo, you can get immediately to Vietnam. Uh, from Kolkata to Hanoi is only two hours, or you go to New Delhi. For New Delhi is uh, three hour twenty five minutes. So, so we are much closer f uh, physically thanks to uh, direct airlines. So we are hoping to do the same for for our uh, for our shipments, and I particularly thank uh, the person who raised the questions of the platform. We don't have a uh, Alibaba. We are not yet China. Uh, we are we are trying to become very strong economically. Uh, so uh, our platform is still um, uh, not as popular, but we do have. Uh, but uh, I, th I think this is a very strong recommendation. I think that I will work with my government and other company uh, to make that platform. At the moment, uh, HCL has made a very important investment in Vietnam, 
And I'm very pleased that I am the person who came to meet the chair, the chairwoman now. She's the daughter of the founder. And uh, after several deliberation, uh, they decided to come to Vietnam. It was last year. And after one year, they grow fantastically. They are very pleased with their performance in Vietnam. So IT is a huge market. So this is the second area, I mean, of town tourism. Now, uh, at uh, trade, and so trade is the right point for you. Either you want to outsource some product, or you want to sell something. I just want to mention, to reiterate again, two very important points for you to take away from this meeting, is that Vietnam enjoys 16 free trade agreements with many countries across the world including all the European unions. I was ambassador there in the Brussels. I'm the person who uh, helped to conclude that deal, uh, the European Union uh, Free Trade Agreement. So once you set up in Vietnam, you could export to the European Union and Japan, Korea, North, uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand, many places with zero tariff. So that is the advantage. Uh, that's that's the, the huge advantage. And number two, we have very a uh, very, very stable political system uh, with foreseeable f uh, policy. We don't have changed the policy. We, uh, the government is uh, remain the same, the same for, for, for over the past since independence and continue to, uh, to be stable for many years to come. So once you come there, you don't see, uh, you just, you, you don't have to worry about political instability and things like that. And there's also the stability in terms of policy. So that is important. I want to conclude by just talking a little bit about investment. Uh, I believe that in the sector here, we ha you have three textile, you have chemical, and you have pharma. So in terms of pharma, we work very closely with a number of uh, company in Hyderabad in order to build a new pharma park in Vietnam destined to Indian pharmaceuticals companies. We try to give to Indian and also European or American pharma company who want to invest in that pharma park a set of incentives, which is more than the incentive uh, you see through the presentation of Mr. Zoom. Thus, we are working with the central government on that. And we hope that the pharma company who are, if you have present here, try to, uh, to contact us Mr. Duke, our investment officer who sits at the back, is the right person to contact. We are also uh, um, sourcing uh, active uh, pharmaceutical ingredients, uh, first with, uh, for manufacturing locally in Vietnam, uh, Remisivir and uh, Modupiravir. So we are discussing with uh, some company. If you happen to have this uh, API, please contact us. Uh, we have a market there. The market is not only for Vietnam, but also for the 10 ASEAN countries, which has the population of nearly 600 million people. In terms of uh, textile, I, as I mentioned, at the moment uh, we uh, want to diversify the market uh, or the supply. We basically relied on uh, China for the supply of raw material for all our textile. Vietnam export, as uh, Mr. Chairman said, uh, 40 billion of uh, <coughs> garment. So we are a country who are very successful in cut and make. Uh, but we don't produce uh, fabric, we don't produce garment, we don't produce polyester uh, to be able to meet our demand. Therefore, this is a huge market for you to come in. Especially when we want to get away from, uh, not get completely away from China, uh, but to, to diversify the source of supply. But uh, bear in mind that uh, it is a little bit challenging because China market is uh, very close. They have the advantage of uh, proximity. They have the advantage that they, their products are cheap and reasonable, and uh, they, uh, they, they compete very hard. And we have the similar business culture with them. For you, you have to develop or you have to make acquaintance with the Vietnamese culture of doing business. You have to overcome the logistic hurdle and you have to make sure that you have a competitive price. 
but uh, with your talented uh, entrepreneur who are very dynamic, I'm sure that you will succeed. So with that, that that's the next slide. In terms of chemical, I think that is also very important for Vietnam now. We have an area designed for manufacturing chemical product. We import a lot of uh, dyeing sub uh, stuff in order to dye our gammon and things like that. So it is also open to you. But uh, our government moved towards a, a more uh, friendly, environment-friendly uh, investment. Uh, so we give more incentive to companies who come with high tech and which is more environment-friendly. So this is also a challenge for you. Having said that, I mean that the opportunity there is humble. And it is the first time for us to come here to make the presentation of our country. I want to thank all the panelists, uh, virtual and uh, uh, on, on, on person, physical, for being here and to share the story of, of Vietnam. And I heard the story of India. I'm certain uh, that we both grow. And before I conclude, I just want to take one uh, uh, quotation from Mr. Cabo who is the um, coordinator at the National Security of USA, who just spoke uh, the week before yesterday. And uh, his word has been uh, going viral on uh, social media. According to him, the coming future of Asia Pacific, the future of this Asia Pacific will be defined by two countries, namely India and Vietnam. With that, I thank you. So thank you, thank you very much for your wonderful, positive uh, concluding remarks. And uh, I am sure this is a beginning and definitely we would like to go ahead with, uh, I mean, more stronger in the relation, business relation with, between India and the Vietnam. Uh, I would like to more, uh, well, I mean, uh, emphasize on let us make a business relation with Vietnam and Surat. That would become more appropriate if we select... Uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, because we have a very strong uh, textile base, diamond base, ph chemical, pharma, whatever you desire, we have a very strong base over here. And of course, IT also, we can definitely do it. Just, uh, yeah, Mr. President. He has already offered a good opportunity for the textiles. And this business, we are directly, I mean, we are going to substitute the Chinese market. So, what I suggest to your honor is like, uh, if you can help us, setting up the warehouse in Vietnam. So we can, there is a concept called stock and sell. So that would reduce the, I mean, that uh, day, uh, logistic time, logistic time. We, we, what we do, we coordinate with the Vietnam government and then we, I mean, we get the, go down or something like that at a very reasonable cost. So that would help us to kick start our business the logistic problems are being solved. So with this, uh, we go uh, proceed towards the end of the program. And I, yeah, there is some formalities left yeah. out. Uh, uh, yes? That is wonderful, sir. So nice of you. Yeah, yeah, uh, this Vietnam dignitaries, they want to felicitate the chamber team. Yes. So definitely, please.
nice photo. In our system, we normally we uh, we do the collective facilitation. <laughs> this is the beginning of the trade between Sudan and Vietnam. <laughs> And I request now uh, Mr. Himansu Badawala to propose a formal word of thanks. But uh, after word of thanks, those who are into chemical and pharmaceutical uh, industry, please be seated. We have some special session with these people. Rest of the uh, dignitaries can go uh, with their uh, respective job. Yeah, it will be on the fourth floor, Sasma Hall. Thank you, Deepak Bhai. His Highness Mr. Pham San Chow, Ambassador, Embassy of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, dignitaries on the dais, of the dais, and my uh, colleagues. Sir, thanks a lot for your wonderful 360 degree win win situation meeting. It was definitely an ice breaking meeting today, and I am definitely sure trade will move on as soon as the flight is on from Vietnam to Delhi via Surat, I mean Surat to Delhi via Vietnam. Uh, it was really very wonderful uh, meeting today uh, regarding trade and industry. About tourism, sir, you said it's a very beautiful country. You, you just spot out two or three spots and we guarantee you all those beaches will be flooded by the Gujarati and Gujarat people. So thanks a lot, sir, for the wonderful meeting. We are thankful to Dr. Do Thao Hai, Minister Councillor, Deputy Chief of Mission, Mr. Tren Wei Dung, Investment Promotional Official, Foreign Foreign Investment Agency, Mr. Do Du Khan, Second Secretary, Vietnam Embassy, Mr. Subhas, who joined virtually with us, and I am also thankful to all you people who had gathered here to know what is Vietnam and what is the business in Vietnam. I am also thankful to all the press and media who are always with the uh, chamber and giving uh, privilege and weightage to their newspaper and media. So thank you, thank you all very much. Let's adjourn.